Homily given on Sunday, 22nd of July 2012, in the Church of the Resurrection in Clonmel, Ireland. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles rejoined Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. Then he said to them, You must come away to some lonely place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For there were so many coming and going that the apostles had no time even to eat. So they went off in a boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But people saw them going, and many could guess where. And from every town they all heard to the place on foot and reached before them. So, as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he took pity of them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he set himself to teach them at some length. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, the Sunday's readings uh, speaking about the mystery and the gift of being a shepherd. The first reading from Prophet Jeremiah, the kind of harm words from God condemning those who he appointed to be the guardians of the people, but they simply betrayed that responsibility, that gift, and just having good time for themselves and stop taking care of the people. And similar situation is taking place in the gospel. We have to keep in mind that still in the gospel, Jesus is teaching people who every Sabbath, so every Saturday, were attending, you know, the kind of religious ceremony in the synagogues. But they didn't find that power given by God there. So they found that power in the message of Jesus. And even more, they found that power uh, in the message that the disciples were preaching they also saw the power of Christ through their ministry. And even now, by the will of God, in the church, we have pastors. Over 40 years, especially after the Second Vatican Council in some places, there has been a kind of very serious uh, reflection about the identity of the priesthood, if it's necessary or what role uh, they could play uh, in the role of the church. In many places in the world, almost the identity of a priest were erased, like something that is really not necessarily. There was also a lot of confusion about, you know, the role of the of the priests. And that even reached to the very core of our faith, to the Eucharist, 
Uh, in some places, those misunderstandings were bigger, in others smaller. So even in, in, some, in some parts of the world, people, and that was not really never, was the kind of teaching of the church and tradition in the church, people were saying that we don't need a priest anymore. Anyone who wants, he can celebrate the Mass. Even some priests wanted to be kind of nice to, to others. They, they simply started to treat themselves as they, like they have no authority to teach, they have no authority to, to stand here in the name of Christ. You can even find on the internet kind of Eucharist where all congregation consecrating, consecrating the host. In a sm smaller kind of parts of the kind of misunderstanding of the role of the priest in the Eucharist was when people were encouraged to say different parts of uh, the prayers who are preserved for only for the priest, like when, when, when the priest is offering the body and blood of Christ to, to God for a whole community, when he says through him and with him and in him, people were encouraged to, to say that all together. The structure of the Eucharist is a kind of dialogue because the priest uh, is the one who represents Christ. And that's not kind of invention of some peoples in the Middle Ages, like many people would like to see the priesthood. That starts from the very beginning. When we read the letter to Ephesians, St. Paul is very clear about the different roles in the church. When he says, and to some, his gift that they should be apostles to some prophets, to some evangelists, to some pastors and teachers, to need God's holy people together for work of service to build up the body of Christ. St. Paul is very clear in many places in the New Testament that everyone has a unique role. It's not that someone is better, you know, than the others. Everyone has a unique role. Nowadays, we think that everyone has to be the same. The Christian faith teaches us that everyone is equal before, before God, has the same dignity, but has different roles to play in the life of the church. And because of that confusion, in many places in the church, uh, people are like in today's gospel, they are like a sheep without a shepherd. There's no one to guide them because they don't believe that there is anyone who got authority, authority to teach in the name of Christ, to work in the name of Christ, like the sacraments, especially Eucharist or the sacrament of reconciliation. And that is one of the sources why the numbers of, um, of priesthood is going down and vocations are, the number of vocations also very small. Uh, not in every part in the world. That really depends on the teaching when they were preached. I had the privilege to be, I, I spent some time away from Klonmel in Poland, but I start from my retreat, and that the retreat was held by the Irish sister Bridge McKenna. Probably some of you are familiar with her ministry. She is originally from Belfast, but now is tra traveling all over the world. Uh, with the healing ministry, but also with a kind of encouraging people um, to pray for the priests and to preserve the identity that God given to the priesthood. And also Father Kevin Scullin, he is a Vincentian priest. For almost 40 years, they traveled all over the world. Sister Bridge McKenna got a special gift, not only the gift of healing, but also before the whole crisis in the church had started, she got a vision and special kind of message for Christ about what, what is going to be happen in the church. And I will finish my, finish my, my sermon with a part of, of her um, testimony. It can be found in the book Miracle, Miracles Do Happen. Actually, it's not a really new book. It was republished uh, two years ago, but uh, it was written in the um, in 90s, I believe, or 80s even. And Sister Bridge McKenna refers to the 70s. But you will, you will hear and you will listen to the testimony and recognize that what she was told 
uh, 40 years ago uh, actually is taking place now. Of course, no one of you is bound by, by those words. There's a kind of, we can call it a kind of private revelation or kind of prophecy. So if you feel that it's relevant to, to you, you can, you can accept that you don't have an obligation to that. Just keep in mind the, the words that St. Paul said in the letter to Thessalonians. Do not strive the spirit or despite the gift of prophecy with contempt. Test everything and hold on to what is good. So Sister Bishma Kenna, of course, only a kind of excerpt of, of kind of larger testimony. She says, in the early 60s, many changes took place in the church because of the Second Vatican Council. These changes had a dramatic effect on the priesthood. In recent times, we have more freely criticized priests. There was a lot of tremble and many priests left the priesthood. I found myself in early 70s, at the beginning of the healing ministry, becoming very judgmental and critical of certain attitudes and opinions among the clergy. One day in the chapel, with this all in my mind, I asked the Lord, what is wrong with the priesthood? The answers came back to me. What do you mean, what's wrong with the priesthood? Have I ever given a gift that is not perfect? What have you done and how have you thanked me for this gift of priesthood that affects your life and all mankind? It was then that the Lord revealed to me that I couldn't just sit back and criticize the priesthood. Actually, in the sacrament of holy orders, the priest says yes to God, so he can be a priest for me, for you, for every one of us. Jesus led me into what seemed to be a sequence of images appearing over the tabernacle. There I saw the ordination of a priest through the Lord's eyes. It was with this great sense of gratitude for priesthood that the Lord that led me to the understanding of what he was asking of me that morning. He showed me a group of very hungry people. The Lord said, Do you see these people? They come to you because they are looking for help, for healing. They come because, to you because they, they are hungry. It is time... A time is coming when there will be a great famine and they will hunger for the bread of life. I am the bread of life. He then allowed me, to do, he then allowed me just a glimpse into what was coming. People would turn against the priesthood and begin to see it only as a job. He showed me a priestly vocation as a little seed he sowed in the hearts of many young men, but the seed was not nurtured, so it could not grow to bear fruit. God revealed to me that a time was coming when families would no longer see the priesthood as a gift they would want for their sons. He would create an environment that was removed from God, pagan and materialistic, rooted in the wisdom of the world, because of this society. Young men, given the seed of a priestly vocation, would not be able to respond. The seed would like dormant. They would not hear the call muffled by the materialism and paternal apathy. Little by little, where the priest would not be appreciated, where it would be attacked and go undefended by Catholic people, it would die. It would die not because the gift was not given, but because we refused it, because we didn't want it, because we had chosen the false gods of materialism and watered-down religion. I felt the Lord telling me, I want to go into the world and tell my people that the priesthood is their gift, so that they may be fed and strengthened. I want to call them to intercede, to love my priest, to reverence the sacrament. When my people love, reverence, and are grateful for the priesthood, priestly vocation will flourish in their midst. It will be a joy for a young men to say yes to this call because they will be supported by their communities and by their families. 
You must tell my people that the evil one is deceiving all of you when you begin to reject this gift of priesthood, when you begin to try to put it on a human level, when you say that it's just a job, a profession. And the second and the last uh, part of that uh, kind of vision really refers to the first reading that we heard today. The second mission was made clear in an image that touched me very deeply. It was as if I was standing beside Jesus and he, he let me look out over the city of Jerusalem. The city was filled with bishops and priests. Suddenly Jesus began to weep. He said to me, Bridge, these are the men I have chosen to shepherd my people, to feed my people, to encourage my people, to let my people. They are losing faith in me. They are seeking the wisdom of the world. They are denying my power and choosing earthly power. He revealed to me that would be a great crisis in the priesthood. Priests would lose faith in Jesus and fail to acknowledge his power working through them in holy orders. I sense God asking me to go into the world and remind bishop and priest with this word. It is not humility to deny the power of the priesthood, but it is the humility to acknowledge that I have chosen them. I have chosen them not because they are holy, not because they are better than others, but I have chosen them because of my mercy, love, and compassion for humanity. It is because of this mercy, love, and compassion that I use them to make myself present. But how I long to do it more effectively through them. Go out and tell them to believe in me.